you want to do haftachat with the promise to tzaddikim in this world? I'm curious about it. It's Perak Chafchet Pasuk Chaf, 2820. Okay, so then we're obviously going to go somewhere else right away. Okay. Well, 28, did I say? 28, 20. Yeah. Mm. Ah. Now, clearly, the problem of this pasuk, right? God says to him, I'm going to take care of you and bring you back to your father's house. I'm not going to leave you go until I bring you back to Shalom. And Yaakov says, and, he's, and he, pro he promises Yaakov, and he says, if God does what he said to me, right, and keeps me safe in my there, in my way, that I am going, and he gives me food to eat and you know, clothing to, to wear, and, he brought, he bring, and I come back in peace to my father's house, then God will be for me a God. That sounds, everybody asks the same question, right? I mean, God told him he's going to do it, and what do you mean, if? God does it. So first of all, second of all, what if God does it? Then he's not going to. He doesn't do everything that he said. Then you, he will not be for you a God. And it's all a condition. Well, yeah, he's do well with me. You're going to be my God. If you don't, then you won't. Forget it. <laughs> so, so that sounds very strange, right? Yeah. And the only question, and the second question is, as I said, what's the doubt? God said he will do it. So what, what do you have a problem with? So obviously that's a problem everybody asks. It's not his. It's not only the Ramban, mm -hmm. and in this pasuk chaf, chaf chet chaf, he says. Oh boy, that's long. I, I, I have a question. Yes. Um, in the um, the early Sukkot. In this unit, where God speaks to him. He says, I am the Lord your God, Abraham, in Pasuk Yud Gimel, 13. 13. This place where you're lying down, I'm going to give to you and your children. Your children are going to be many, and you're going to expand yourself uh, north, south, east, west. And you're, check it out. And I am with you, and I will preserve you in all where you walk, and I will bring you to this land, because I'm not going to leave you until I have done that which I have spoken to you. And then I will leave, and then, and then what? Then I will leave, and then what? Then I will leave. <laughs> That's peculiar. It's an odd phrase, isn't it? And then when I do when you do everything I promise you, I'm gonna leave you. No. It's ad ad I mean it, you're worried that I might abandon you when you are in danger and you're out there. And I promise you I won't leave you when you're out there until I bring you back here. Does that imply then I will leave you? Uh, what do you think? Mm -hmm. There could be a different level of hashkacha when a person, he's going out of Eretz Yisrael. I'm, I'm just adding a Ramban here, right? He's, he's going out of Eretz Yisrael. Yeah, remember, when you go out of Eretz Yisrael, the then you're not now. under the same kind of hashkacha usually, usually than you are in the land. So you tell him, for you, I'm going to be with you just the same. Until so you come back here. Maybe, come maybe back here naturally, I'm with you. I don't know. Well, because it's because uh, of the... Always, always it's a very interesting question you ask. Maybe he thought uh, the, he's going to a place where the God is not the God, that Abraham is at. Uh -huh. Because, you know, Laban and the square. And the so then he has to tell us that. Because yeah. when he's back, it's obvious. Well, do you want
want to hear a, a, uh, a blasphemous reaction to that question? It's a very interesting question. Yeah, sure. If you want to hear some blasphemy. Well, well, yeah. <laughs> it is possible, I have been tempted sometimes to believe, that when we live a normal life, we're today, we're living a normal life. It would seem that there's a normal life. We don't have some. We don't have a terrorist attacking mm -hmm. us. I didn't hear. I didn't see anybody stabbing me. And the car was working properly. And there's no other car that came near me to crash into me. And I, you know, and I don't have cancer right now that I know of. Right? I mean, I'm living a normal life. So I take it for granted. You're right. It's not. It's not so normal. To, to who knows what's normal. But when you have a regular ongoing natural life, it is possible that God lets things go, lets things happen by themselves. Because according to natural law, it's not, uh, you know, not by themselves. God created the world, and he created the world with gravity. So he doesn't have to make me put my foot down every time I step. He made gravity that makes my foot go down every time I step. Right? I mean, so it's not hashkacha practice that my foot should go down. Yeah. I mean, you understand what I mean? Yeah. So, so possibly my heart is pumping. Mm -hmm. That's the way the natural heart is pumping. Now, so when Yaakov, I'm trying to transfer this to the to situation. Yaakov is home. And he, his wife, his mother gives him breakfast. And he gets up in the morning and he takes his books and he studies. And he sub goes out to hunt. And, uh, you know, there aren't any, any, any enemies at the door. And he's not running away from anybody. And he's home. So the level of God's relationship with him is not absent. He communicates with God. God speaks to him. He speaks to God. He, he thinks about God. He learns. He, he meditates about the wonders of the creation. He dabbles to God. I mean, it's not that there is no... Interaction. I don't mean, but he, but God is not giving him lo lollipops. God, it's God is not bringing the breakfast to him. His mother is bringing the breakfast to him. I mean, right? I mean, so in that natural, so-called natural world, according to the Ramban, those are miracles as well. But they're miracles that God set into motion, so to speak. Right? Now, uh, all of a sudden, his brother's going to kill him. Right? And he's running away. Well, now, if God allows nature to take its course then most people who have a strong man like Esau chasing him would get killed, right? Most people who leave home can get attacked by tigers and lions and they fall into pits and they get lost in the night. I mean, or steal, or robbers come to them. I mean, nature now is pretty threatening. He's vulnerable. Mm -hmm. During this time, if nature would take its course, then Yaakov may not survive, right? So he is getting a promise. God is saying to him, you know what? Unlike somebody else who ran away from his home, whom I don't have a special relationship with, who just might, you know, some people will survive, some people won't survive. Right? You, you, I'm promising you something. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to take care of you. Even if there are 14 bullets aimed at you, they're going to miss. I'm, I'm going to, you know, the natu natural things will not happen to you. Yeah. The danger that is, that is statistically probable is not going to be happening to you because I'm going to be with you. All that time that you are vulnerable, come back home, I'll bring you home so that the danger is over. Come back home, I will, so to speak, leave you, like you said. At that point, leave you meaning we will be in the same relationship where we communicate with each other, but you, I will not have to make your finger rise and fall. I will not have to... So that's my, I mean, now, of course, some people feel that what I have just said now said is blasphemous. That's what I meant by blasphemy, right? Because some people feel that really every blink of my eye is God's mm -hmm. assistance. It's not, that it's, that, not that it's natural that, it, that God made nature, but they feel, now, you know, so for that, for that, you have to have a certain kind of faith that goes beyond what I can imagine. I mean, in other words, somebody has a baby that's a tay -Sachs baby, or somebody, uh, you know, gets into a car accident, and God made it happen. 
in normal day. I mean, it's, you know, people have babies, right? So some babies are retarded and some babies are healthy and some babies are not. So God chose this baby today. I'm going to make this baby pay sex because of something, right? So when, when we believe that, then you have to say, why would God do such a thing, right? So then you say, we don't understand. Or we could say, well, he wanted the parents to rise to greater heights by suffering in this world so that they would get their role in the world and the world to come. Or something, something, something. You, you make up all kinds of, I mean, make up. You try to figure out some kind of spiritual meaning to a thing which you claim God controlled, God did. Right? Now, if you don't say that, you know, somebody got into an accident because the other guy who was driving wasn't paying attention to where he's going. It's not God made him do that. God, you know, God is looking on that and he's very sad. I mean, because, you know, the world goes the way the world goes and I'm very sad that this guy got killed just now. I mean, I made the world in such a way that has DNA that can sometimes have mutations. And for the most part, mutations in DNA brings evolution to achieve greater and greater perfection, as it has done for the last millions of years. That's good for the world. But part of the story of having mutations that could progress is the ability of some mutations to fall. Yes, yes. To fall. And that, that yes. and, and so, so that's what I did. Now I'm sad about the occasional accident, the occasional thing that's not good, but I didn't make that specific accident occur, God might say, right? Because I, the, the ultimate good is the good that's going to come from the way that I, the world was created. It's the best possible world I could imagine to do, God says. And the Rambam believes that. It's the best of all possible worlds. And he's, the Rambam is not looking forward to the world that it will to come one day, like the Ramban says, when everything will change in terms of nature, right? We, we talked about this many times before. So, I mean, I like your question, because it led me to wonder about uh, what is this difference between now he's leaving, he needs God to be with him, and then after that he can leave him, so to speak, even, you know what I mean? So to speak. Yeah, but what I To be more at, 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 at arm's length. I mean, here he has to hug him. I guess he's he, he got a, a phrase because he's conscious that that he he's afraid he's, he's uh -huh. brother he believes in his mother his mother was wrong so it's a lot of things it's not only one thing it's many uh, things he's very uh, frightened he's very frightened very, very upset frightened. his mother may never be wrong it? well it's not important but he's very upset yeah. he's, he's right when he goes to sleep that night by the way. You know, did we talk about this last year? Mm -hmm. It says in the Pasuk, he took from the stones of the place and he put it around his head. Didn't see. You, you know the Medrash that Rashi says he that he took, he took stones, but they all joined and became one stone. Mm -hmm. According to Nitziv, it says, mm. he took stones, floral stones, and he put it, me rashotav. May Rashatav doesn't mean mitachat la Rashatav, but May Rashatav to the Tziv means he put it around his head. Now, just imagine, there's a man at night. He thinks somebody's coming to kill him, and he doesn't know if there's wild animals. And he's, this is the first time he's been camping out in the, in the wilderness, right? So he's frightened, mm -hmm. right? So what do you do when you're frightened in the dark? In the dark, pitch black out, right? You don't know what's going to happen. Light a candle. So what do you do? May light a candle, but he might then attract yes, yes. somebody who's looking for him. Because yes, yes. Esau is pursuing him, right? Mm -hmm. So he can't do that. He, he doesn't have a house to protect himself from the things outside. Mm -hmm. So he's going to have to sleep right here on the ground. Who knows what's going to happen to me? So he takes stones and he puts it around his head. Right? Mm -hmm. So the Natsib says, I understand that that is a psychological comforting thing that is totally foolish, right? I mean, you know, a little tiger can come over and eat you up anyway, right? Or whatever. So what's this stones around his head? So he actually, during the team explains, this is the expression of a fearful person who makes himself feel a little better by snuggling up. You know what I mean? 
you know how a, a very frightened person, instead of lying straight, will lie like this. Right? Yes. Why is he lying like this? He's going to be safer like this than like that. But you know, lying like that means exposing. Like this means protecting. I mean, even though it doesn't make any sense, right? It's not physically true, but psychologically it's true. Mm -hmm. So he gets he put these stones around his head, and that way he doesn't have to see what's coming at him from any side, and hopefully nothing is going to come. It's like if you see a person with a car about to hit him, he goes like this. Yeah. What does that mean? He's going to step it out. What does that mean? I'm, I'm not looking at the car that's going to hit me, so, you know, it's, it's an yeah. impulse. Yeah. It's an impulse that makes sense. So God, so he dreamed. God is on the ladder. And according to the Tzidik, God says to him with a smile, he says, Yaakov, what are you doing? Right? What are you doing, putting these stones, <laughs> putting it on your head? Don't you know that you're safe because I'm here? You see, it's just a uh, Tzidik. When he finally gets up, he takes those stones and he makes a matzeva. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. He, I realized that that was stupid. I have to convert the stones that were a silly, pretending to be safe, to a monument to God who really is the one that makes me safe. You know, then see, it's beautiful there. You know what I mean? It's sort of like he converts the stones that were silly, that were really, in a way, blasphemous, not realizing that God is with them, yes. to the monument that testifies that God is with them. He's no longer going to put stones around his head. Very cute. Anyway, so, but, but that transforms the experience he had in the home where things are kind of more so-called normal. Now, I'm saying something that the Ramban doesn't believe. He thinks that everything is a miracle in normal life. When grain grows from the ground, it's a miracle. When the rain falls down from the, from the sky, it's a miracle. I'm not sure exactly what he means because he knows that that is a cycle you know, water evaporates and goes up into the sky and condenses and rains. I mean, not everywhere and not always. Sometimes there's drought, sometimes not. So to him, I don't know, he, he does say in Kriyat Shema, in Arayayim Shema, he says, when God says, if you do the mitzvot and you carry out uh, with love and uh, so on, then I will bring the rains and there will be a lot of grain and your animals will eat and you will have much, right? You will have plenty. He explains there in that parcha, if you remember, that that is a national bracha. It's not an individual bracha. It's a national bracha. And it's when the whole nation is uh, obeying and doing the covenant. Because that is miraculous, he says. Imagine looking at a country and saying all over the world there's such a thing as rain and there's such a thing as drought. And there's such a thing as hurricanes, and there's such a thing as damage, right? But in that country over there, people will look at Israel, and they'll say, what's going on there? It always rains the way it's supposed to, and it always rains on time, and they always have good produce, and they always have good food. The, it will be clear to the whole world that it is because of this people that is a special people that do the mitzvot that God has made this miraculous, steady um, you know, unchanging goodness in their nature to them. Yeah. That's a miracle. Yeah, it's, um, <clears throat> um, your book, um, Let There Be Water. Huh? Let there I, don't, be, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's the... Um, uh, well, well, somebody wrote it, wrote it, but what's, what's, it, what's in the, the stream? I, I, I said, it's, 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 it's not... It's not um, it's not taking salt out of water. What, what is it though? That's that. Evaporation? No. Oh no, it's not taking salt out of water. No. It's desalinization. No, that's, 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 that's taking that's, salt out of water. Right. But, but rather? I forgot. But filtering? No, I mean it's some kind of a scientific breakthrough which, uh, which uh, Israel has uh, succeeded in accomplishing. And, um, and giving to the rest, sharing, I'm sorry, the, sharing with the rest of the world. But it's not, it's scientific. It's something scientific, I should, I should imagine. Oh, it's not desalinization, is no, it's, 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 it's not desalination. Hmm. It's desalination. But, um, but I forgot what it was. But it's something, it's something There's a book, there, Let There Be Water. Yeah. But that that's what this is about. I mean, that's what the book describes. Yes. But I forget what it was, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. so, uh, no, 
I have a question to Robin de Matseba. Yeah, before we go, I love your question, yeah. therefore. It really got me to thinking about his leaving. Hmm. I think you've had more thought. It's very interesting. What a question. Your question was a great question. And I brought up this thing about the, uh, about there being water because the brain power, I don't know, I don't know, I, I Is itself it's miraculous? It's, it's not, no, not, 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 not in, that, in that sense. But um, the, I don't know what it was, but it, it's something that is real good by thinking, by thought. Out something. They figured out something. But it's that could be transforming for the whole world. Yeah. If they share if they share and they and they are sharing it with um, and, and without it without it, it they would also be suffering. The, the kinetic was going uh, was going down and um, but but with uh, with this discovery have sufficient water. Something like that. Mm. Mm. Well, the Matseba. Yeah. Matseba or Yaakov? Matseba, yeah. Um, Yaakov is taking food and from his, uh, his home. And he leaves. Oh, you he think leaves. he had some food with him? Yeah, because his mother served some food. To, to carry to the stall. Yeah. Like he gave his son, robbed, robbed him of all that stuff. I have but no idea. I have no idea okay. what he has. We assume that. But why why Jacob is is for where Jacob is getting oil to put on, 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 on the Matseba? What is the meaning? For what he's he's taking oil because he he, he said that he he goes to the Matseba with the stones and he he put oil. What is the oil? Where this oil come from? What oil? You told, me, you, told me that, you told me that he would had some food, so maybe he had a little bottle of oil. I mean, you have oh some what? food, you have to sprinkle some oil as a dressing, as a salad dressing. Or a Easy way. I don't know. Or he saw an olive tree over here. There are olive trees all over Israel, right? He saw an olive tree and he took some oil, some olives and he crushed it and made a little bit of oil. I, I have no idea. It's a good question. I don't know what he's carrying with him. What do you think he's carrying with him? I know. That's right. He, I mean, he says he's so chairman of Rosa. I know where he got from Lavan. From a, from a, um, a surprising Egyptian enemy. But that's before his. Um, his By that time, who knows? Asaph's son. Yeah. That's a Medrash, right? That, yeah. Asaph's son caught up with him and stole him. And he stole mm -hmm. him. Yeah. And stole his possession. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, you are right. It says he threw, he put oil on the head of the uh, of the Matseba mm -hmm. in Pasuk 14. He's right. Right? 14. 2014. They took Shemel al 28. 28-14. I'm sorry, no, 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 no. Chat, yeah, yeah, chat, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? Chat, that? Oh. Um, you'd have 18. Questions about the sermon? I don't know. That's it's a very good question. I don't know. Let's see. Mm -hmm. uh, 18. Well, we'll see in a second. Okay, so anyway, we wanted to understand something about verse 20, though, if you remember, the Ramban in verse 20. Yes. He said, if, if God will be with me, remember? Mm -hmm. So Rashi says, Im yishmor li haftachot tachani. If he will keep the promises that he promised me. Now that sounds like a little bit 
right? If I promise my grandchild something, she has to say, if you keep your promise, I mean, she's supposed to believe that I will keep my promise, no? Mm -hmm. So, even though I'm not like God. So he says like this, V'ta'am hatnai shelo yigrom hachet. The reason that he has any doubt about it is that maybe I will not be worthy mm -hmm. because I will transgress, I will fail in some way. God is promising me now while I am the way I am. Tomorrow, I might do something wrong, I might cheat somebody, I might be insensitive to somebody, I might behave in a way that uh, doesn't, uh, isn't proper for a person like myself, and God would say, you know, uh, my promise is only if you... Uh, it's always conditional, right? We said this once upon a time. We said this about Abraham. Remember a few weeks ago when Abraham was promised, uh, listen, you have a great reward. Don't be afraid. You have a great reward. So Abraham says, uh, well, you know, what are you going to do for me uh, when I don't have a child? So everybody asks, what do you mean? God promised you you're going to have a child two or three times before. And this land will be inherited by your children. And so on and so on. He's been told. So what's he, what's he saying? Uh, has any doubt about uh, that? God so he says, yes. We had died. The rabbi got me, but he talked about it a few times on Friday night. We've been there, right? That when God promises an individual that it is always a matter of the relationship. It's based on our relationship that when I promise you something that you, uh, you know, I'm going to give you, I'm always going to give you uh, an allowance of 50 cents every week. Well, if you chop down the, the, the cherry tree, I won't give you. Because you're supposed to be a good boy. Right? That's the way it is when the person, when God promises an individual. Unlike we had trouble, if you remember, that a prophet, a prophet who says something good is going to happen to the Jewish people is always going to be. It cannot not be. It's not conditional. It can take, take its time. If it's bad, it could also be not going to happen because people do tshuva or whatever. But if he says tomorrow's going to be rain. It's going to be tomorrow rain, right? right? And why, why is that? And God says to the Jewish people in the Torah, if you want to know who is a true prophet and who is a false, false prophet who does not speak in my name, make a test like that. If he says something about the future that will happen, it's got to happen. So since God is using that as a test for a prophet, then he has to make sure that he's going to let happen what he predicts, right? Not conditional. But when he speaks to me, or actually he doesn't speak to me, but when he speaks to, to Pinky, and he tells him, you're going to have this promise, well, that depends. As long as Pinky, who is always going to be a tzaddik, he will always have that promise. Right? So Yaakov is saying, if, meaning, if I will be worthy. He doesn't mean if God will keep his promise. Right? So, and that's what Reishis Rabbah says, Raguna b'shem Rav Acha, Right? Ask this question. This exclamation point. Be surprised. Hashem says, I am with you. And then it says, If he's going to be with me. How could that be? You know? Hmm. Now, this is a completely different statement. I think. There is no promise for the tzaddikim in this world. Now, does that sound like that maybe a sin will come? Um, depends. Well, the promise is and guarantees are contingent upon their beneficiaries continuing well, righteousness. He's saying in the, in the, in the, in the Parshim that this is what the Ramban understands, that, the that maybe the hate will, maybe the hate will make possible that the promise will not be kept. Hmm. A person always has the Chilech option. And we can mess things up. I, maybe we'll come back to this in a second. I, I'm not sure. Uh, the Rabban is certainly quoting Rav Huna to mean what he says Rashi meant as well. Because the sin can possibly, a person may possibly be less worthy, then the promise is never a permanent promise. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't understand why Rahuna would say that in Haftachala Tzadikim Ba'olam Hazeh. In Haftachala, anybody in the Ba'olam Hazeh in that case. Tzadikim are more yeah. likely to continue to be who yeah. they are. Maybe he might think that 
they did convert would have a uh, would have more consistency in their lives. Unless you want to say that God is much more meticulous with Sadiqim. You know, they are they are special people, right? So if they're special people and they get a promise, then you really be you have to be really special. If Hashem promises somebody like me, then, you know, he can be a little patient. I don't always uh, do everything he expected me to do. But a tzaddik, I mean, unless that's what he means. Because okay. otherwise, why talk about tzaddikim? We could talk about anybody. There's no haftacha, there's no promise from Hashem to an individual in this world. I mean, period. Why any individual, not only tzaddikim, right? But we'll come to that in a moment. Let's, v'yitachin od. Rabban says, I've got another shot. We, we are in. in the same Ramban. After what Tzadikim Olam Azeh, the next words. In which uh, Chaf, Chaf, 20. Right? 20. Yeah. He quotes Rashi, and then he says, that's what Precious Rabbah and Rahuna B'Shem Ravacha said the same thing, to answer the question about why he said, if God does it. Right? Because there's no Aftachah, what Tzadikim Olam Azeh. Mm-hmm. Then he says, V'yitachin Od. I've got another possible explanation for this problem. al Chapshat. Shein hasafek badavar. He doesn't mean to say, if God will do this. He has no doubt. Aval bechol haatid yomarakatuv kein. Every time we talk about something that will be in the future, ki. For example, ki 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 usually means if, right? Im. Im yeh. So he's going to give examples. He's going to give examples where im does not mean if, but that when, when something happens. So he says, kimo. He's going to give examples. Ad asher im asiti. Well, God himself says here like this, right? I will be with you until if, not until when I have done. Right? What is the im there if not when, Right? God certainly is, in, is trying to tell to him that he will certainly do so, right? This im, same word. And then another pasuk, he says, V'chein, im al b'nei Yisrael. Not if there will be a jubilee for the Jewish people, but when, when there shall be a jubilee for the Jewish people. Another pasuk. Im yavo ha'eich yeh ha'tnai az, yitkayem ha'maseh. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not a pasuk, that's when that period of time comes that this condition, that this promise will have co- occurred, then I will be, then God will be my God. That I will declare him to be my God. Right? Klomar bivo'o. What we mean to say is when it shall be come. When it shall come. Why not now? Why doesn't he say, God is now my God? Why, when it will have come to be? So for that, you have to explain what he means by God will be from being my God. Because he's obviously does not mean to say he's not going to be, God is not going to be my God now, only when when you're finished doing this. So that the Ramban is not even discussing, right? He's discussing the doubt. Right? He's discussing the doubt. He's trying to explain the doubt, either because I may not be worthy, or he really means to say when. But Pinky's asking, is there a different question? How about being Jacob's God now, today, and tomorrow? Well, he and him is not in the same relationship. Mm, pretty close. In some ways, it can be used. Do you understand what Pinky is asking? No. Okay. Pinky is saying, according to the last shot, when God will protect me and bring me back to my father's house, then God will be for me my God. When? So it's not, it's not if. When. when? His question is, okay, but why does he say when he does that? That's when God will be my God. Why not right now God will be my God? Is my God. So what do you think? So now he's not my God. That's the question. I'm I'm expecting to him to do well to me and at that moment he will be my God. Uh We 
now. Why not now? So let's see. What do you think? It's got to be, I mean, so you're asking a separate question from the Ramban, right? You understand that, right? The Ramban is not interested in that particularly. The Ramban is saying, I don't understand why he has any doubt. So he explains a doubt is natural because a, a promise is not a promise unless he lives up to it. Or it doesn't mean a doubt at all, but when he says in, it means when it shall happen. So comes Pinky and asks the question, fine, okay, so you've, you've solved the problem of the so-called doubt here. But uh, why not tell us why not present? Why not presently? And in both cases are uh, conditional. When and if. Yeah, but why not now? His question is why not now? We, we, were, we worried about the if and the, and, the, and the when. The question is, what, what about right now? Why not God is my God now? You promised me that you would bring me back to the house. I want to tell you, God, that you are my God now. Oops. Why only then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Too true. So, we got to come up with an answer for that. <laughs> the Ramban's not going to help us here because he's not talking about that. Nunu? No. No, no. What does it mean? Uh, what does it mean to say God is my God? God will be for me, will be my God. Yeah, I do eat a lot. You want some? <laughs> um, nah, I, I, it's the same. So one way, one way of talking about this, God is my God, is that I do what he commands me to do, right? He gives me his throat, I do. Well, that shouldn't be later. It could be now, too. You shouldn't have any excuse that right now I'm, I'm walking uh, to Rachel's house, so therefore I don't have to do your bidding. I will do your bidding when I come back home. That doesn't make sense, right? I mean, it wouldn't be reasonable. Or saying, you are my friend. But I say, if you borrow some money, you will be my friend. What does it mean? You are actually my friend. Yeah. That makes sense, right? I mean, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. So, it, it cannot be al minat l'kabel schar, so to speak. Right? Only when I get a reward, that's when you're going to be my God. Mm -hmm. Right. Or you will fulfill but there's another one. Ah, no, so what do you say? It's not conditional, like Rashi says. Look at um, 21. The Ramban says, it's not conditional, like Rashi, that then, Aval who no dare, he is, pre he is swearing. You have to read the sentence according to the Ramban. You have to read the sentence. It's one long sentence. Right? What did he say? Look at look at Pasuk 21. Look at what he said. 20. Right? And now we say it's not if. But maybe when, right? Good, good. When? But your problem still is that you're not satisfied with that. When? Why not now? And then he says, Vishabdi Vishalom Abeta B, and I come back to my father's house. Then, then, when this happens, when it happens, not if, right? But look, fine, when it happens. Right? Then, at that time, God will be my God, and not only will he be my God like he is all the time, but I will be able to worship him in this place, and I will make this into a Beit Elohim, and I will give a tenth of all that he has given me. Right? In other words, there's a difference between you, God, and my God. True. But when you bring me back here to Yerushalayim, 
then you will be my God and I will worship you and I will extol you and I will make you famous in the world over and I will, I will uh, be able to bring you offerings and I will make a mass air and all the nations of the world will know that uh, God is uh, the God of the world. I mean, what Vayashem what, Lilohim, Vayashem Lilohim might mean much more than just I bow down to you, God. Right? When, when God in Dvarim, if you remember, Hashem says, when all the nations of the world will see that you do the mitzvot of God and they know that God listens to you wherever you, whenever you call to him, they will look upon you and they will see the name of God written on your head. Right? They, they, and they will have awe of you. Right? Haya Hashem Lilohim might mean in a demonstrable, uh, famous, what should I say, expression of the fact that God is my God. I could be in a concentration camp and God's my God, that's true, right? But, but the people who see me in the concentration camp, especially the, the gap capos or the, the soldiers there, they say, ha, these, these people, God is their peace, God is, uh, they're the people of God. That's not the people of God, right? It's because uh, where's God? It's, uh, obviously, if he was the people of God, then he, they would be in good shape. Look at the way there we step on them, right? Vaya Hashem Elohim is more than what I feel and what I do towards God, but also demonstrable. There's nothing to the, uh, the situation now where uh, God is his God. Yes. And uh, when we... Uh, when I come back to this place... Then it'll be then it'll be obvious to all that God and I can worship Him in the way that I could not when I'm walking out from here. And uh, like that. yeah, the relationship will be even, even though even, even though now He's my God. Yeah, I mean I have I swear fealty to Him. There's no question yeah. about that, right? I mean you're absolutely right. You have to read Ayah Hashem Elohim as to mean something different, more. Yeah. The Ramban tries to string it all together. Right. He's going to be my God, and I will worship him in this place. Right. Which, until now, until I get there, I, he will be my God, and I won't worship him in this place. He's making the sentence like a right. run-on. Right. That's a, a little gimmicky, but at least it works. Say but I want to say the possibility that oh, but, 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 it'll be demonstrable. It'll come back his family, and his wife. But yeah, he yeah. hopes that he will come back as a as a safe and sound man. And children, twelve children. Mm. I mean, he only says he's going to give me food to eat and beg a little bush, and I will come back with shalom el beit He doesn't say, and if he gives me children and wives. It so happens that that's where he, he was sent to get married, right? If you remember, his father told him go marry somebody from the family. Right? Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, Abraham never did say. Right? Abraham said, go to my place. Go to the place where I was born. Go to the place where I was a child. Go to the place where I was. But he never said to my family. It's, it's Eliezer who told them. He actually lied, I think in order to make them feel good, that they uh, were chosen, you know, to make them, uh, butter them up a little bit, mm. that Abraham told me to take a wife from the family. Mm. Well, but Yitzchak certainly said so, right? From your mother's family. So, Jacob with this doubt, in the family of Israel. If you say doubt. Um, he's forgetting the blessing that he already got from Isaac because Isaac said to him and maybe shall I bless you may you fruitful and make you numerous and may you be a congregation of people may he grant you the blessing of Abraham to you and your offspring to you that you may possess the land and your sojourns which God gave to Abraham Whoa. so that's a big blessing to him so No. I sound as it sounds like a good question. <laughs> so, no, right. We have said 
The Ramban has said when God gives somebody a promise, he can doubt it because he might not be worthy of it. Right. Mm -hmm. But, but oh, yeah. we have said that if a prophet tells you a promise, uh -oh. then it's got to be. Oh, right. So if you call Yitzchak a prophet, mm -hmm. and he's giving him a blessing, you will inherit this land and your children after you, and you will get the blessing of Abraham mm -hmm. by God, that God gave to Abraham, then uh, that takes away the possibility of his being afraid Shema Yigro Machet, because it's always supposed to be like money in the bank. Exactly. That is your question. Because this looks like a, a new beginning. Yeah, but no. the question is, is, is it God speaking to Yitzchak, telling him to tell Yaakov that? Or he... He's referring to the blessing of Abraham. Yeah, the blessing all. of Abraham. I'm going to give you the blessing of Abraham. He, I... But uh, did God tell him, be my prophet and tell Yaakov this? I'm, I'm just trying to get out of your question in a cheap way. I don't know, right? <laughs> if it doesn't happen, will Yaakov say, oh, prophecy is a false prophecy. My father is a false prophet. Why not? My father promised me he's a prophet and he told me that I would inherit the land. What if he doesn't? Will he say it's a false prophet, my father? Mm -hmm. I mean, is this a prophecy or is it a, a father's blessing? Because after all, he if I bless my children, do I? Am I a prophet? Uh, you will be blessed. Oh. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> but right, if I every father blesses his children, right. he prays. He prays when he blesses. When he's praying, when he's blessing, right? He's praying. May God agree with my blessing that He will bestow upon you. I hope that this will be so. Mm -hmm. You have to say that because it's. I mean, your question would be a perfect question if he's speaking as a prophet. God told me to tell you that you will be the possessor of Abraham's blessing. Then he has no more room for doubt. You are. You're a very good question. It's like what I do, what I, what he, he is doing is, this is the blessing that I received from from my father Abraham. So taking, this is for you. So what does that mean? That means a lot of things. It's the whole well, importance of. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. When Abraham blessed Yitzchak, he said, "Yitzchak, may you have the blessing that I received from God." Yeah, that's what you have the blessing that I received from God. I suppose that Yitzchak can fail to carry out uh, the responsibilities of these blessings by a free man, and uh, he won't get the blessing. I mean, you know? But if I tell my children, or my grandchildren, I uh, bless you that you shall be, you know, real tzaddikim and do God's work in the world and so on and so on, and that you should receive God's blessing that you will have a lot of children and be happy. I mean, I said, I'm, I'm praying that this is so. I'm trying to hand you a blessing, and I hope that God will confirm it. I hope that you will deserve it. When you bless somebody, you're sort of standing back there, and you hope that you're not giving something when you give a blessing. That's like a book. When you give a blessing, you're giving a hope. You're cheering. You're 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 being the audience. Uh, you know, after a while, a father doesn't control what the child is going to do. Very good question, though. Yeah. So we have to say that it doesn't mean a prophecy. It's not. He could still doubt that he may merit it. Like a bracha. A bracha is not the same as a as a prophecy. Got to say that. Otherwise, his question is right. So if we come back to square one. Why is Yaakov in doubt? Bracha is a blessing. 
not magic about it, but people think so today. They'll go to a special rebbe or a special rabbi, yeah. a special mystic, and they say, give me a blessing. And they and somehow they walk away now give and they say, oh, for your blessing. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm fixed. I'm, I have a blessing that I'm going to get well from this illness. I have a blessing that I have children or what I can't have child. They walk away feeling, oh, the proper understanding of that should be should be that if you talk to a tzaddik who empathizes with your pain, he will daven. He will daven. He will give you a blessing. I will I will pray for you. Hashem hopefully will give you what you need. And there might be efficacy to somebody's prayer who is very close to God that I'm asking him to participate in my prayer. I'm praying for a child. Maybe join me in my prayer. So that bracha is not a, a present. It's a joining with me. I, that's the way I should understand it. Other people find it very magical, very special. Mm-hmm. If you send a little Bible to Rebbe, he didn't do it. He did not do it. What? But he didn't do that kind of blessing. I could tell you from my own experience. I once met him with Judy. And we had something very, very special we wanted to ask. You know, we never had a child, right? We adopted. Eliana is an adopted child. So at that time, it was 10 years already since we had tried. And we came to him. And we, and we had a time, chance to be together with him for about 15 minutes. It was incredible by ourselves. Because we came from out of town to a Fabreng and a certain special year site. So they made a tradition that anybody who comes from far, far away could be with him, have a special personal audience. It was about 2, 3 in the morning. And we sat and we asked a few things. And one of them was about this. And he says, I want you to know, he said, <laughs> I want you to know that God is anxious to give you all that you need. He didn't say, I want you to know that you're going to have a child. He didn't say that. Right? Now, of course, he could say that prophet, he knew that we weren't going to have one, so he wasn't going to give it to him. But I mean, his, his approach was, God is anxious to give you all that you need. Why he will or won't, he's not going to say, right? He has no control over the situation. Different from what else in life is. Very much. By comparison, right. Mm-hmm. He wasn't going to behave like a mystic who's going to say, zap, you're going to have a child. Some people do that. Biography, one of the biographies, biographies of the the Bible from Rebbe, I think he uh, (coughs) mentions cases where uh, (coughs) someone comes to him and he uh, knows something. He knows something about the person without being told, you mean? Yeah. Something like that, or he knows in fact what's going on in this guy's family, or I don't know whether I, I don't know what, but something uh-huh. something that extra sensory perception, yeah, uh, yeah so, so to speak. Something like that. That's the question. Yeah. Yeah. Some people believe there's such a thing. Some people are born with a certain ability. I mean. You know, there, there are people when the police don't know what to do about a certain lost child or a body somewhere or whatever. There are some people, they think there are some people who just have awareness. Mm-hmm. And they go to them and they ask. And the person says, I see a tree and I know one. Mm-hmm. 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 And they follow what they say and they find the body. And there are stories like that. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, it's beyond me. I, I don't understand. There could be. I mean, listen, I, I could hear a sound, right? I could hear a sound. I could hear you speaking. A dog can hear sounds I cannot hear. Yeah. No question, right? And, and, uh, and a, a, a shark can feel vibrations in the water something like two, three miles away. with some kind of sensory. So who knows, maybe there's a awareness 
of things that we, you know, that we don't have a touch with them in those days. So he doesn't control the situation. You understand? It's just awareness. Mm-hmm. A bracha is different, no? That is, if you think that it's magic. I mean, you weren't going to have a child, and now you go to this Rebbe, and he'll tell you. What do you mean to a Huh? I would hope so. I mean, like, my son is in a similar situation. No? So how would they perceive it? I, I don't know. We don't discuss it. I don't even, I don't, we we don't, have not discussed it. No. No. Oh, she won? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it does. That happened to me. Or, years ago. or he's waiting for this green card, right? So you can go to some Rebbe, a mystical person, who says, I bless you that you should get the green card on December 16th. 16th. And then you will get the green card on December 16th, and you'll say, that's a holy man. He, he gave me the bracha. I, I, nobody could argue with you if you believe it, because nobody can tell you. You know it. I mean, it looks, it happens. Fascinating evening. I didn't think I didn't even think we would make uh, such a big deal about this uh, pasuk. What are we saying? Two two great questions. What are we saying? What your question was, and when he comes back, will he leave him? That's very good. Excellent. Wow. And the other one is, why not now? Mm-hmm. What do we mean by uh, we ought to leave? Another question is Yitzchak's uh, blessing, and he already has it. It's not just the uh, Kaisis. Very good. And what about Each one of them required some uh, understanding. Because in this Shabbos, we can talk about it.